Chapman's crazy. Huntley, if it brings you down, chance. Attention shoppers, Kmart is buying Sears. What the surprise multi-billion dollar merger could mean for you. A wave of violence across Iraq today and an NBC News investigation. Graphic videos of attacks on Americans posted on the internet by insurgents. Why are these horrifying images so popular in some parts of the world? Too old to get behind the wheel? Another serious car accident involving an elderly driver. Some changes have been made, but are they enough? And Elizabeth Edwards speaks out about the day she'll never forget when she learned she had breast cancer. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening. America likes to shop. It's the largest and richest consumer society in the world, and the competition for getting customers through the doors and to the cash registers has never been more fierce or worth more. Today, the game changed again when two struggling retail empires with big names got married, Kmart and Sears. But what does it mean for you? Does it mean more choices at still lower prices? Here's NBC's Ann Thompson. It's a merger of two... And joining me now with more on what the future may hold for the newly merged Kmart and Sears, Wall Street correspondent David Faber of our business network, CNBC. David, Walmart still obviously is a 100,000-pound gorilla on the block known for its service. How do they compete against that? It's going to be very hard for them to compete. I don't think people down in Bentonville where Walmart is based, Tom, are particularly concerned, but you never know. Target competes, as Ann points out, very successfully. Costco competes successfully against Sam's Club. They are hoping to do that, but there's no doubt the shadow of Walmart hangs over both of these companies. A little more than 30 years ago, Walmart was only 5% of the size of either one of them, both of which at various times were the nation's largest retailers. Walmart crushed Kmart, forcing it into bankruptcy. Sears has also suffered in part because people are so happy to go to the big box stores like Walmart that they don't go to the mall as often where Sears is usually located. And the other half of the equation, of course, is pricing. Is this going to be a price war that American consumers are going to take advantage of? It may end up being an advantage for consumers. You know, today I met with Alan Lacey, the CEO of the new company, and Eddie Lampert, who will be its chairman. I asked them, as a result of more buying power, are you going to be able to lower prices? They were non-committal, but they do admit that ultimately they will be having more power with certain suppliers, benefit consumers, perhaps. All right, thanks very much, uh, David Faber of CNBC. The story still has a long way to go, obviously. But for today, at least, shares of both Kmart and Sears surged on the news of the merger. So did the rest of Wall Street. The Dow was up at the end of the day, almost 62 points. NASDAQ was up 21 points at the end of the day. In Washington, Congress is back for a post-election lame duck session. And there was some controversy today. House Republicans voting to change their own rules to allow their powerful number two, Tom DeLay, to keep his position as the majority leader, even if he is indicted in an illegal fundraising case in Texas. That story tonight from NBC's Chip Reed. Uh, somebody that deals with that. Back in this country on Capitol Hill today, debate over whether the practice of embedding reporters with the U.S. military is a good idea. Congressman Sylvester A. Reyes, a Democrat from Texas, made it clear he thinks it's a bad idea because, he told a Marine Corps commandant, it provides the enemy. When we come back, more on the images of war in depth tonight. Dozens of militant Islamic websites celebrating attacks on U.S. troops by the insurgents in Iraq. Later, Elizabeth Edwards talks to NBC's Katie Couric about her battle uh, with breast cancer. NBC News in depth tonight, an NBC News investigation. This week we have seen graphic videotape of a U.S. Marine who fatally shot what may have been an unarmed Iraqi insurgent in the chaos and confusion of Fallujah. As the investigation into that incident goes on, we've also found other graphic images, not of attacks on Iraqis, but of attacks on American forces. Images that are shot and then posted on the Internet by Iraqi insurgents. What are they all about? How are they being viewed in the Arab world? Exclusive details on that story tonight from NBC's senior investigative correspondent, Lisa Myers. Up next, back in this country, has happened again a serious accident with an elderly driver at the wheel. What's being done to keep these drivers and the roads safe? She's the strongest person I have ever seen. John and Elizabeth Edwards with Katie. Part two of the exclusive interview, only on today. 
The Bill Clinton Presidential Library opens tomorrow in Little Rock with literally millions of artifacts documenting the highs and the lows of the president's eight years in the White House. Even the outside of this library has already sparked some controversy, one critic comparing it to a double-wide trailer. Inside, everything from the presidential limo to an exact replica of the Oval Office. And yes, there is an exhibit dealing with the president's impeachment. Almost anyone who's got breast cancer. So much has been written and broadcast about it. So many personal stories have been told, some with happy endings, too many with the saddest endings. Yet, every story tells us something important. Tonight, Elizabeth Edwards, wife of the vice presidential candidate John Edwards. The Edwards lost a teenage son in a car accident. They have a 22-year-old daughter and two more children were born when Mrs. Edwards was in her late 40s and early 50s. Today, Mrs. Edwards talked to Katie Couric about the beginning of her treatment and what she has learned. Let's talk about Wednesday, November 3rd. Yeah. I told Kate about our, that, you know, it looked pretty serious, uh, our oldest daughter. I really did not sit around thinking, what am I going to... The most important election of our lifetime. And then waited for so the speeches to be given in, uh, in Boston and uh, to uh, Mass General and a six-year-old and a four-year-old uh, who um, basically put their lives on hold with the promise that they were going to get in of the days that we've got, which is wonderful. Katie will have more with Elizabeth and John Edwards tomorrow morning on Today and again Sunday night on Dateline NBC. That's Nightly News for this Wednesday night. I'm Tom Brokaw. I'll see you back here tomorrow night. Nightly News is a presentation of NBC News. More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. John Cameron's place. Election threat. Political parties in Iraq call for a delay in the critical election there. Tonight, what might happen next? Danger on board. Passenger jets and dangerous cargo. A warning tonight from the government that safety 